This grand nursing theory presentation will be on Virginia Henderson and her knee theory. This presentation was prepared by Sarah Kowalski, Stephanie Henley, Heather Kilos, and Ryan Katides. Virginia Henderson was born into a family of scholars and educators, which propelled her academic drive through her lifetime. She was the fifth child of eight born to Lucy Abbott Henderson and Daniel B. Henderson on November 30, 1897. Named after the state of Virginia, the Hendersons moved to their family there in 1901, where she lived out her childhood. Virginia Henderson became to be known as the mother of modern nursing prior to her death on March 19, 1996. She was a leader of change in the nursing profession. She transformed the nurse from one that carried out routine doctor's orders to a discipline in its own right. Virginia was motivated by patriotism in 1918 and enrolled in the Army School of Nursing. Here she was mentored by Miss Annie Goodrich and received her diploma in 1921. After obtaining her diploma, Henderson worked for two years at the Henry Street Visiting Nurse Services in New York. In 1923, she accepted her first teaching position at the Norfolk Protestant Hospital in Virginia. She yearned for more education, thus thrusting her back to school at Columbia University, where she obtained her BSN in 1932 and her MSN in 1934. She was asked to be part of the nursing faculty upon graduation until 1948. While teaching, she also worked at many different hospitals in New York. In 1953, Henderson joined Yale University as a nursing research associate. While teaching and working in the 1930s and 40s, Henderson was able to contribute to the nursing profession through writing. She revised Bertha Harmer's textbook of the principles and practice of nursing, creating the fourth edition published in 1939. To this day, this revision and publication was and is widely used in nursing education. By the time Henderson was 75 years old, she had published the fifth and sixth edition of this textbook. While researching at Yale University, Henderson published her own book, depicting her concept of nursing titled Nature of Nursing. This piece of writing redefined the role of the nurse. Her most valued work, Nursing Studies Index, is known as first major classification system for nursing scientific literature, the first annotated index of nursing research. Henderson worked on this publication from 1959 to 1971, publishing the four volumes in 1972 and named the Research Associate Emeritus at Yale University. Virginia Henderson was part of a medical world in the 1920s to 40s that reacted and focused on the patient needs. Vaccines and treatments were created based off what the patient's symptoms were upon presentation. Also during this time, women were finally able to vote in the presidential and congressional elections in 1920, thus creating an uphill battle for women to be respected in the medical field, especially nurses. During the Great Depression, Henderson was able to continue to shine light on the nursing profession by publications and advancing her career through education. Henderson's foundation of the need theory is based off of her nursing experiences and education. She was able to assess the role of the nurse in the patient's recovery and interdependence of their care. Through her work as a visiting nurse in New York City, Henderson was able to see the connection of the patient's participation in their treatment and rehabilitation to the success of their health thereafter. Virginia Henderson found value in the patient's participation and their ability to return to health, thus creating the need theory. She believed the role of the nurse is to help the patient with all nursing needs, but not specifically illness needs. Through her advanced level of education, Henderson was able to integrate basic human needs and nurse encouragement of patient recovery into the role of the nurse. The three assumptions were nurses care for a patient until a patient can care for him or herself, Second one is a nurse will devote themselves to the patient day and night. And third, nurses must be educated at the college level in both sciences and arts. As with all nursing theories, Virginia Henderson's theories' major concepts fall in line with the nursing meta paradigm. This means they relate to nursing, health, patient, and environment. The first key concept is nursing. Henderson once stated that a nurse must get inside the skin of each of her patients in order to know what they need. In order to achieve this, the nurse must assist the patient as determined by Henderson's 14 components, and the nurse must help the person as quickly as possible. The nurse acts as a substitute for the patient, 
helper to the patient, and partner with the patient. The next major concept is health. Henderson simply believes that the level of health is directly correlated with whether or not the individual is able to independently perform the 14 components of basic needs. She knew this was a difficult task, as there are many factors that can influence this. Next is the patient. The patient is the recipient of the nursing care. The patient and family can be viewed as a single unit. That unit is composed of biological components, psychological components, sociological components, and spiritual components. The final concept to address is environment. Similarly to Nightingale, Henderson believed that the external environment could affect a patient's health. She defined environment as the aggregate of all the external conditions and influences affecting the life and development of an organism. The environment is composed of biological, physical, and behavioral characteristics. Virginia Henderson published what she believed to be the 14 key components needed for good health. Breathe normally, eat and drink adequately, elimination of body waste, movement and posturing, sleep and rest, select suitable clothes, maintain body temperature, keep the body clean and well-groomed, avoid dangers in the environment, communication, worship according to one's faith, work accomplishment, play or participate in forms of recreation, learn, discover, or satisfy the curiosity. This diagram shows the relationship of the meta paradigm of the patient, nurse, environment, and health. The nurse works as a substitute, helper, and partner to help address the physiological, psychological, sociological, and spiritual needs of the patient to promote independence. Nurses can utilize Virginia Henderson's theory and practice by examining the nursing process. The nursing process consists of five steps, including assessment, diagnosis, planning, implementation, and evaluation. When looking at Henderson's need theory, the assessment would include an assessment of all 14 needs. A diagnosis would be of what needs aren't being met. Planning would be how to address these needs. Implementation would be intervention on the needs. And evaluation are those needs now met. The diagram on the right is Henderson's 14 components as applied to Maslow's hierarchy of needs. Next, we'll be looking at a patient case and comparing it to this hierarchy of needs. A 75-year-old presents to the emergency room with low oxygen saturations and increased work of breathing and fluid overload on exam and inability to avoid. In the diagram on the right, you can see that some physiological needs are not being met by this patient. This includes inability to breathe normally, inability to move and maintain desirable positions, and inability to eliminate body wastes. A diagnosis of heart failure has been made. The planning involves increasing oxygen and decreasing fluid, allowing for adequate elimination and prevention of falls while in the hospital. The implementation process includes application of oxygen, administration of intravenous Lasix, placing a Foley for adequate elimination. Evaluation consists of a decrease in fluid, the patient no longer requiring oxygen, and ability to adequately eliminate urine without the use of assistive devices, and no evidence of falls during their admission. In this evaluation, we can see that the patient's physiological needs and safety needs were both met. During the discharge plan, that is when love and belongingness and esteem will be addressed. The discharge plan consists of finding support systems and includes motivation to manage their illness at home, which can be done through adequate follow-up and at patient education. Henderson's need theory can be used as a basis for research and can be reformulated into researchable ideas or questions and can help guide research in individual aspects of a patient's care. The study that will be analyzed is Profile of Hospitalized Elderly According to Virginia Henderson, Contributions for Nursing Care, which was published in 2016. This study was a quantitative and descriptive study utilizing Henderson's need theory in creating a profile for elderly patients. The sample consisted of 43 patients over the age of 60, including 25 men and 14 women. The top diagnosis found were cardiovascular disease and heart failure. The method of the study consisted of the index scales of Katz and Lawton to assess functional capacity and a questionnaire on Henderson's 14 basic care components. Each participant was examined through the 14 needs of breathing, eating, elimination, etc. 
After obtaining the data of each particular case, each need illuminated in the questionnaire was addressed. Examples included inability to breathe related to history of smoking. The intervention of smoking cessation and counseling was applied. Another example was problems with elimination due to constipation. The intervention utilized was adjusting the diet and starting a bowel regimen. Results showed that needs were adequately assessed and addressed through the analysis of the entire patient profile through Henderson's need theory. This quantitative study illuminates the importance on the aging process and the ongoing reassessment of the needs of this population to promote independence by utilizing Henderson's need theory to develop a plan of care in the elderly population. Henderson's theory is simple in its presentation. It is easily understood and easy to follow for the nurse. It is, however, complex in its scope and encompasses all of nursing care. It includes all physical, psychological, social, and spiritual needs and can be applied to patients of all ages. Henderson's grand theory has been influential in furthering nursing science and research. An example of this is Kolkalba's comfort theory. This is a middle-range theory as it contains fewer concepts but has some degree of generalization to practice. Kolkalba starts with the assumptions that humans have holistic reactions to complex stimuli. Comfort is immediate, desirable, and germane to nursing care, and humans strive to meet comfort needs. Kolkalba then proposes that nurses must identify the comfort needs of a patient and design interventions to enhance comfort. The nurse must account for any variable involved. The nurse enacts the interventions and when comfort is achieved, health-seeking behaviors in the patient are engaged to further enhance and maintain comfort. In examining these theories, one can see the influence of Henderson on Kokalba's theory, meeting the needs delineated by Henderson. Also, Henderson's concept that a nurse will perform tasks for or with the patient until they can perform them independently. Kokalba's patient who becomes able to engage in health-seeking behaviors. In conclusion, Virginia Henderson was the nightingale of modern nursing. Her neat theory and its 14 components hold a large influence and usefulness that is still widely used today.